Dear God, everyone, Kojima Toshiva, and welcome back to episode number 45 of the Inline G Flute Podcast with me, your host, motherfucking Inline G. Okay, lads, ladies, and all those in between, we're getting straight into this. No fucking around, because you guys can see from the title, this week's guest is none other than Julien Baudimont. Yeah, really. Now, that's a flute player who doesn't need an introduction. If you don't know who he is, go and have a wee Google. I have nothing more to say about him. In fact, I said everything I had to say on this very fucking podcast. Episode number 28 was the only time in this podcast's history that I reviewed a single album for an entire episode as I gushed over Julianne's California Dreaming record. On a side note, if you haven't listened to that episode, I would go back and do so. It does give a lot of context to things I talk about today as well as some context on Julianne himself. Now, that episode had nothing to do with Julianne. He even messaged me afterwards to thank me for coming out. Now, we never met until this point. Fast forward a few months, he's in Cologne, where I currently reside, on tour with the London Symphony Orchestra as guest principal flute, and a podcast together was a no-brainer. We chatted about everything from the French flute school, Sankyo flutes, Julien's time as an orchestral player in France, LA, Cardiff, and naturally we hear all about the process for that iconic album. And there's a few exclusives with regards to his future albums. And if you stick around to the end, you will get to hear a very small excerpt of one of those albums. An excerpt that has not been released anywhere to the public. A true exclusive to the Inline G podcast, you lucky we fuckers. So, skip ahead now for that landmark episode. But before then, if you can hang around, the Inline G podcast is free and always will be free. That's a guarantee. However, if you wish to donate to the podcast, you can now do so through the Patreon. On the screen now is the address, and for the audio listeners, it is patreon.com forward slash the inline G flute podcast. It costs five euros or dollars or pounds per month, and with that, you are keeping this podcast alive. You get four episodes a month come rain nor shine, and that is the price of a pint you will pay. If you saw me in the pub and you thought, I love this podcast, I'd love to buy Gareth a pint to say thank you, well, you can do it virtually once a month. I do everything around here on my own. Marketing, graphic design, research scripts, audio production, video production, etc, etc, etc. Becoming a patron helps generate a regular income for this podcast, meaning I can turn down other work to focus more on it. And I also get to travel to meet the best flute players in the world, as you have seen with today. And as a thank you, you get to put your questions to these guys when other people don't. And you'll get the episodes a little bit earlier than everyone else. So, if you can afford it, please sign up there. You can unsubscribe at any time instantly. There's no weird hidden charges or anything. I do quite a lot with other podcasts. If you can't afford it, it helps a huge amount. I cannot tell you, without you guys over there, this podcast would be done by now. If you can't afford it, don't worry, that's grand. Someone else is paying so you can listen for free. I can't believe I'm saying this, but here is this week's Inline G Fruit Podcast with Junia Boudimont. Yeah, so we're here in Cologne, um, and you're on tour with the London Symphony Orchestra. How's that going? It's great. It's um, it's fabulous. We're having great fun with Antonio Papano mm-hmm. uh, on tour uh, to Germany and to Denmark. We just played in Paris a few days ago with Martha I mean, Argerich. Yeah. What was uh, Martha playing? What was the Schumann? <sighs> yeah. And uh, yeah, it's it's great. I I I love this orchestra because you know I, I studied in London uh, in 1997. Yeah. Uh, with I know. Paul and Moon Davis at the Guildhall and. And so the London Symphony um, is the orchestra of my childhood, I would say. Yeah, did you go and watch them a lot and stuff? Yeah, when you were in London? a yeah. lot. Well, he was principal flute at the he time was as principal. well, wasn't he? Yeah. And um, I was having lessons with him in the afternoon and the evening. I could listen to him playing in the LA. So, oh. so playing in this orchestra is also something which is really emotional in a way. Yeah, I can imagine. Yeah. And what's on the program? You're playing tonight in Cologne? Yeah, we're playing tonight. Uh, there are two programs and I have the... The luck to share with Gareth Davis. Uh, we're playing a Vaughan Williams Symphony, mm-hmm. um, Rack 2, yeah. and um, concertos, di- different concertos, Ravel Concerto with Shamayu. Oh, um, that's awesome. oh. Yes. And uh, Barber con- Violin Concerto with uh, Janine Jansen. Yeah, like this. And is other stuff. Uh, that's incredible. Are there, yeah. are there two concertos in the one program? No, no, no. Okay, you, no. they're separate. Yeah, okay. separate. Yeah. So where's left on the tour? Uh, tonight is Cologne. Tomorrow we're going to Denmark to Alborg. Yeah, I know Albert. Arus, yeah. 
with the accent Arus. I don't know where. I don't know where it is. Okay. <laughs> uh, we'll Google that. Yeah. I know it's in Denmark somewhere. Yeah. And uh, then we're going back to Germany with Hamburg, Hanover, and Frankfurt. And okay. then I'm back to France after that. Nice. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And you're doing a gig, another gig in France then? Uh, no, when I'm back, I uh, have a week in France and then I'm going to America. Oh, what's on in America? Master classes and recital in um, New York and Dallas. Oh, you're not going to the NFA then? No. No. Oh. No, no. It's in summer, right? Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. No, it's no. In, I think it's the first week of August or something like okay. that. Yeah. Okay, no, I'm, I'm, I'm busy. Yeah. I'm going. I don't know if I should say I'm going because. Um, I'm going anyway. I haven't told people I'm going yet, but I am going. But um, it's going to be hot. That's Where is it? Thing. Texas. Oh, yeah. San Antonio in August. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah for yeah. an Irish person. <laughs> even um, for a French person. Yeah, well, yeah, even for you guys, yeah. Um, do you know, every time I Google you or put something in about you, there's this one fact that keeps coming up that blows my mind. You Is it still true that you're the only French flute player to hold a principal flute job in Britain? I think so. It was true at the time anyway. At that time, yes. Yeah. Maybe it has changed, but I don't. I I don't know any French flute player. I couldn't think of any either. Being principal in a great, a great in Great Britain. No, like I looked for this. So obviously, yeah. well, not obviously, but for the listeners, then you were principal flute of the BBC National Orchestra of Wales yes. in two thousand and six. Is that right? I think it's five. Two thousand five. Okay. Yes. How Maybe. was that? Uh, it was a long time ago now. Uh, at that time, I was principal. In, at the Lyon Opera, where I'm, where I'm still. Mm -hmm. um, and I got this job um, because I was on trial there. And, um, and you know, I always wanted to, to know where I can go in life. Okay. You know, how far I can go musically, humanly, f in terms of, of life expectations. Yeah. And, uh, and, and then so I went there and I was on trial. You know how it goes in Great Britain. It takes a long time. And yeah. then they called me to tell me, tell me that I got the job. And I went there uh, and I only stayed six months. Okay. Um, okay. And it was a great orchestra. Um, the, the reasons why I came back in, to France at that time was really simple is I preferred to live in Lyon. <laughs> than, than, in, than in Cardiff. Yeah. I had nothing against the orchestra. It was a great orchestra, great people, really. Uh, the level of orchestra in Great Britain is really, really high. High yeah, standard. Especially really, those orchestras, really high. Yeah. Um, people might think that it's in London, but every, anywhere in mm. Cardiff, in Birmingham, Glasgow, in Manchester, Manchester, Glasgow, yeah. uh, the level is so high. So I really loved it. But um, I'm not a big fan of rugby and I don't drink beer. Yeah, so Cardiff is not the place so for you So I was feeling a bit <laughs> miserable sometimes there. Uh, that's the little story of it, yes. But I have okay. very nice memories from this for the, from this time. Yeah, well, I actually, I studied in Cardiff. I did my bachelor degree at the Royal uh -huh. Welsh College okay. of Music, so it's a city I know very well. Okay. But yeah, it is, rugby is everything in Cardiff. If yes. you're not into rugby, you're kind of out of it then. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> do you remember that the stadium in Cardiff? Is right beside, yes, yeah. Yes, it's right in the center and all the streets Close. lead to the, yeah, to the stadium yeah, yeah. it's great and the stadium's huge it's like I think it's yes. 75,000 seats it's, or it's something really big. it's really big it's one of the big. biggest in Europe yes 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 yeah on rugby day in Cardiff there's nothing else it's just rugby no I mean it's, it's I think it's a it's beautiful region honestly the, the, the country is beautiful and um, the, the level was really great mm. um, except that I I wanted to go back to France uh, it was I can understand a pure that, yeah. choice of um, living yeah, really. Yeah. yeah. Although at the time, wasn't Thierry Fisher conductor? Yes. He was a flute player, though. Yes. Is he still a flute player or does he still play? I don't know. I don't think so. I mean, if, if he plays, it's just, I mean, we should yeah, for ask fun. Him, well, uh, for fun. But uh, he used to be the principal flute of the Chamber Orchestra of Europe. Wow, I didn't know that. Yes. And uh, his recordings he made are really fantastic. He plays so oh, well. Oh, wow. Really, okay. Really, yes. And he's, he, he is a very good conductor. Yeah. Does it change your approach as a flute player knowing that your conductor is a flute player as well? Does it make you nervous or? I don't know. No, I don't think so. I mean, they know what it is about. But um, he's, he's great. And um, I last time I saw him was in Los Angeles when I was living there. And we talked about the past in Cardiff. And now he's conducting in America, I think. Uh, he is, yeah. Somewhere, somewhere in Salt Lake City or? Something like that, yeah. Yes. That might be right, yeah. Yeah. Let's probably Google that to check. Uh-huh. 
But yeah, so it doesn't change your approach now. Because I had no. Katrina Ryan on, the principal flute in the National Symphony Orchestra of Ireland. And Jaime Martin uh-huh. is the conductor there. And she was saying when she first played, like, the big solos, you do get a bit more nervous. She uh-huh. was like, oh yeah, because he's played this. He knows this. He's going to have his version of what he thinks it should sound like in his head. I'm always nervous anyway, so it doesn't really. Really? Yeah, oh yeah. You get nervous. Of course. I don't believe that at all. It is. I, it is absolutely true. You're it's, one of the most confident performers I've I'm, ever seen. I'm... It's it's a good nervosity. Okay. It's a good nervosity which I need, in fact. To it's give like a little bit of Yeah. I mean I mean it's something special to go on stage and to play uh, with people, in front yeah. of people and it's it's an it's an, an excitement. It's it's not it's not a nervosity which paralyzes me, but yeah. it's 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 still a nervosity. And I, I mean during the day I know that I have a concert tonight. Okay, so like for example tonight you have a concert. Yeah. Are you? What's your What's your routine throughout the day for a concert? Uh, having a video podcast. Yep, every day. <laughs> yeah, every <laughs> day. <laughs> yeah. Uh, routine will be. I mean, let's speak about my French routine. Usually, I go to teach at the conservatoire. Okay. Um, mm-hmm. And I could teach until five, and then I go to the opera house where I play at seven thirty or eight p.m. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. it's all day long work, and then it can go. Oh. It can go to midnight. So yeah. it's it's pretty long days. They are not all like this, but but they can be. Yeah. And if I if I would be free in the in during the day, I will normally have a normal day. Okay, you don't like eat anything specific or no. avoid caffeine or anything like that. No. No, no, just normal day. Okay. It's a normal day, and I know that I have a concert in the evening. Okay, does it stick in your mind then? Are you thinking yes. about it all day? No, but I know. Okay, okay. So, I, I mean, as you say, if I'm more nervous uh, in front of a, f- uh, a food conductor, no. No, because okay. I'm You're just always nervous. In yeah. The, in the good th- way. Yeah, is there a healthy line to be nervous? Is there like... Because there is that thing. It gives a little bit of adrenaline. It can yes. sort of give the performance that little sparkle, yes. but it is a fine line before yes. it's... You know, hinders the performance. Yes, and and I think I mean I never I mean I'm doing I'm doing this job uh, since 25 <laughs> years now, and um, in fact uh, it it never left me. No. Yeah, never. Wow, that is surprising. Do you get ne- more nervous for like orchestral concerts or solo concerts, or is it all just the same? It depends. Okay. It depends. I, I think the orchestra the the. the I would say what is interesting in the orchestra is that um, you have to play with people and very often the destiny of people who play with you depends also on you, on your playing. Yeah. So I feel more responsibility when I'm in the orchestra. Yeah. If I'm doing solo, it's, it's, one, it's my own yeah, yeah. The, I would the say way you can swear on this podcast. Okay, okay. It's my own. It's my own, it's my own shit. Yeah. Um, but with orchestra, there's a responsibility. You have I get colleagues that, yeah. on your right and colleagues on your left and behind, and um, and it's a respect for them as well that you don't yes, want to fuck it up. Yes, exactly. And if you have to play a solo, then maybe they have solos after your solos, and they yeah. they are waiting for you to start if you don't start. Yeah. So I like to feel <laughs> responsible. Yeah. Yeah. It is very exciting, yeah. Yes. And <clears throat> so, continuing on the British theme, you did say you studied in Guildhall when you were 18. Yes. What made you go to London at that time? Because obviously you're French, mm. and France has this great, which we will get on to, this great tradition of flute teaching, uh-huh. et cetera, et cetera. Mm-hmm. As an 18 year old with all that talent, why would you leave France? It's a good question. I remember when I left France, people told me, you're crazy, you should stay in France because yeah. uh, the France, France is the country of flute, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Uh, which. I think it's tr- it was true decades ago. Yeah. But now it's so international that you can play the flute well everywhere. Yeah, that is true. You can play the flute well everywhere. You can play the flute bad everywhere as well. True, yeah. But of course, the, the inheritance that we have uh, from the French repertoire, the French composers, mm-hmm. uh, is huge, of course. But anyway, uh, in fact, I wanted to go abroad. Okay. Um, because I, as I said at the beginning, I like to, p- I hate, I hate to be in my comfort zone. Okay. I hate that. Okay. I hate that. And one day I met a great flute player, Julie Stewart, you know, mm-hmm. British. I'm actually not familiar, no. Yes. And um, I think in my souvenir, she was doing like an Erasmus exchange with okay. the Paris Conservatoire. Okay. And I went to the Paris Conservatoire that day to listen to the lessons. At that time, Alain Marion was teaching. Yeah. 
and I and I met this girl who played so well. Okay. Uh, and I asked her where, where are you studying because you play beautifully, and she told me at the Guild Hall with Pauline Davis. And in fact, just before I met this girl, I had bought a CD. Uh -huh. uh, of Lucia di la Mermor played uh -huh. by the London Symphony. Ooh, okay. And the solos were pl played by Paul Davis. Oh, yeah. And <clears throat> I was listening to this recording and I thought, oh, that's a beautiful playing. I love yeah. this playing. And then I meet this girl and she was doing with Paul and then you know, it went so quickly in my mind that why should I meet this guy? Yeah. Yeah. I'm just yeah and <laughs> in fact <laughs> i'm crazy and and then um so i i touched that i touched touch base with guild old school and register for the audition yeah to go to his class and i succeed and i remember they told me yes okay so you will be at the guild old school next year that's very happy and it was london because I love London. Yeah. And um they, but and they told me, well, the problem is that Paul never takes uh first year students. Ah, okay. Uh, so all my <laughs> dream was <Shit>. you no. Know. <laughs> anyway, and so what I did, I contacted Paul <laughs> and I asked him, Okay, listen, I, I just been admitted to the Guildo school, but I want to study with you. Yeah. Uh, and I know you don't take first year students, so can I go mm -hmm. to meet you and play for you? Yeah. So I said, Okay, it was so nice. He's still very he is nice. Very nice. Yeah. Is is the best. Anyway, and I took I took the Eurostar and I came to <laughs> London, <laughs> and I played for him. And said, okay, I will take you. And that's the story of the Guildhall School. And that's it. Away you go. Yeah. At Eighteen years old. Yeah. And how long did you study at Guildhall? Two years. Two years. Okay. Two years. Then I went I went back to Paris and I got into the Paris Conservatoire with Sophie Cherrier. Yeah. Uh, who was also fantastic. I mean, I, I had I, mean, I had the luck that I always had. Always had great teachers. Great teachers, yeah. Sophie and Paul, they, they taught me so much, really. Both yeah. of them, they, they were amazing. I adore <coughs> Paul Edmund Davies. Even now, he's doing so many different projects online yes. and teaching things. He's such yes. a passionate teacher. I lo and he is, as you say, he's so nice. <laughs> he, he's such a sweetheart. Yes, and I always wanted to look like him, you know. He has the best uh, loafers and the best linen <laughs> shirts. <laughs> yeah, he's very and English in that sense. Very yeah. English. And you know, actually, because you, you made this nice review of my CD, he oh, was in the cabin doing the recording in Seriously? Paris. Seriously? Yes, he was in Paris that time. And he, he, he took three days in the wow. cabin to help me with this recording. So, wow, okay. Paul, if you look at this podcast, thank <laughs> you again so much. Yeah, and come on the podcast then. There's yeah, an invite as well. Next, yes, exactly. <laughs> wow, so you got him in to just get an opinion or just to let him listen? Um, or? You know, because I, nev I had never done any recording, any solo recording, never. Oh, wow, okay. Yeah, never. And... And then we talked and I said, you know what? I love to do this. And uh, if you need help, I can help you. I said, yeah. well, I mean, it would be great to have him in the, in the, would, in the yeah. box. True. One of the best flute players in the world uh, to have his advice in the box. Yeah. Yes, I take it. And actually, that made me a little nervous. That I, you I play. Say would, yeah. Yeah, you play in the, with a microphone, you know, in front of you. Yeah. And your teacher is listening to it. <laughs> with the I know it's funny because you say your teacher and I imagine like, that was so long ago and you're such a big star now but you still think of him as he's my teacher you're a teacher yeah that's so and interesting very often when I when I text him I call him dear professor seriously still yeah, yeah. wow so you keep in touch with him then still you still yes yes and uh, I think it's a proof of respect mm -hmm. really I can agree with that yeah yeah, yeah. no really it was I mean he, he was really important to me that's like amazing. Sophie but we're speaking about Paul yeah so. but we're talking Paul now yeah yeah, yeah. yeah I actually did he not make a beer as well one time? I think I read somewhere he was making his own beer for a while. Really? Yeah. I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't be surprised. He's the kind of guy to make beer, yeah. He knows about champagne. Oh, does he? Okay. Uh, he's the, he's, yeah, he's got the good Bible. taste, hasn't he? He's yeah. the Bible for champagne. Yeah. Really? Yeah. yeah. I'm going to have to ask him. Actually, do you know what I wanted to ask you as well then? When you were studying with Paul, obviously you were like 18, 19, that kind of age. Mm -hmm. um, was there any other students in his class at that time that were her now famous flute players or yes. big orchestras? I mean, uh, uh, Juliet Bozor. Oh, of course, yeah. Uh, she's playing in the London Philharmonic. <sighs> is she? Yeah, uh, was she in? Yeah, she is. Yeah, London Phil. That's right, London Phil. Right. And um, oh my God, sorry, my memory. Uh, who is playing now? I think in Liverpool. Um, Who's in Liverpool? Uh, Cormac, Cormac, the Irish guy. Yeah, Mac Henry. Yeah. Uh, Julie Stewart. Um, and 
from the names I remember, that's it. Okay. And yeah. what about in Paris? I mean, you went to the CNSM. I'm sure most of your classmates were. Yes, with Sylvia oh. Caredou. Oh, you uh, studied with Sylvia as well. Yeah. Oh, cool. At the same time, she was in the other with the other teacher, I think, uh, with Paul, uh, Pierre Ivarto. Ah, yeah. um, Sarah Louvion. Oh wow! Yeah. She's in Frankfurt. Yeah. Uh, Mathieu Gossi Anselin, who is now he was principal in the Komisch Oper in Berlin. Ah, and wow. now he's in uh, teaching in Linz, in Austria. Um, so many, uh, some Isabelle Pierre, who is in the Paris Opera. Oh, I know her. Yeah. Um, Magali had had just left when I arrived. Oh, and she was maybe still. Uh, I was. She was in her last year when okay. I got in. Is Magali uh, older than you? I shouldn't say that. Obviously, I don't. Uh, <laughs> I'm not the <yeah>, well, <laughs> You both look yes, like you're about is. 35. So <laughs> I think fine. she is. <laughs> oh, she'll be delighted with this. <laughs> a year older or two or something. Okay, okay. Okay, so I'm going to get on to this topic now because I have to talk about it with French flute players. You studied in London. You went to Paris. We talked so much about this great French flute school, Le Grand École Française de la Flute. Mm -hmm. What is it for you? Is it a style of playing? Is it a style of pedagogy? Is it something that maybe only existed in the past? What do you think? It's a good question. I think it's many things at the same time. Um, I, I mean, speaking about the French flute school, I think the if I would make it very simple, the French flute school is a school where the playing is made effortless. Okay. To make it simple. Okay. Effortless in the meaning of the power, the singing, the, the, the singing voice, the vibrato, um, the colors, yeah. the capacity that you have to, to be flexible with the air. All of this effortless. Yeah. You, you don't play with a big vibrato, for example. Or you yeah. don't push on the sound. You, you, it's, it's everything is a, a little bit for the good way and sometimes for the bad way, um, uh, very subtle. Yeah, that's the key thing, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. And, uh, and sometimes you could say that it it has uh, it needs more of power of or I don't know. Yeah. But mostly, I think it's something which is effortless. Yeah, okay. Do you not think that's a little bit of a reflection of French culture in general? Uh -huh. like French culture is all about subtlety and you know, nuance and all these beautiful right. things. I feel like it's maybe a little bit of a representation of it, but is that something you're... Like, how does it taught or how do you teach it, for example? Like, in concrete terms, I'm trying to make sense. Because obviously, when we talk about this, I've studied in France, I've read so much about this that I have an idea of it, but even then, the idea is a little bit vague. <laughs> it's still a little bit smoke mm -hmm. and mirrors, if you get what I mean. If you if you browse the flute repertoire mm -hmm. s through centuries, you have the 18th century, mm -hmm. which is the first golden age of the flute. Yeah. Okay. Vivaldi, um, Bach, yeah. Philip, Mozart, kind of Haydn, and then the Romantic period. You have almost nothing, nothing except yeah. Schubert and some stuff yeah. written yeah. for flute gigs. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And then it goes directly through a little Berlioz, but then mm -hmm. Debussy Ravel yeah. and, and the modern are. repertoire. Yeah. And I think the fact that the flute skipped the romantic period yeah. had an influence on the sound of the flute. Really? Okay, now this Because you, what you have in the romantic period, you also have Reinecke, sorry, Reinecke Concerto and Sonata. Yeah, but there only is a spattering of pieces yes. in that period, yeah. Um, and so you... If you make it simple, you you start from from the bar, from the 18th century and you skip to Debussy and Ravel, which is in fact th the same effortless yeah. way of composing the flute. Yeah, um, and also w why there is such such a little repertoire for the flute in the Romantic period is that because there was a fight well, the instrument yeah. for the instrument yeah you know? and, and exactly. Reineck is a good example yeah because yeah. in fact it was forbidden to play the the modern flute at that time in the given house Leipzig that's right I've read this yeah yeah so um so my <laughs> about me teaching the flute is in fact to to check in each repertoire what is 
the idea, what is the sound that they wanted, for See, example. This is very interesting. It's very important that you cannot play Jolivet like you play Reinecke and, that you, and, and, and uh, you play Leclerc Sonata. Yeah. And to put yourself in perspective of a composer writes a piece for flute yeah. and he has the sound of the flute at that time. Yeah. And he composes for this sound. For this sound, yeah. It's very important. Um, so this I try really to, to make it clear that when a student of mine plays Schubert, what is the flute of Schubert? That's so interesting, yeah. Okay, what is the technique yeah. of the flute of Schubert, for yeah. example? And what is the, the sound that Jolivet hears at yeah. that time? It was Rampal sound, for example. Yes, true, yeah. Um, anyway, so that's the first approach of we, we, we need to have an idea of aesthetic. Yeah. Magali said something similar as well about this. It was always that the music comes first and we're always trying to get the idea of the music. And she was also talking about that great, you know, um, impressionist era of French composition. Yes. You know, Debussy had that and a lot of inspiration yes. comes from that era because obviously of the poem flute pops up at the same time and it yes. all kind of... Exactly. You know, sorry, can you move in a little bit there? Okay. Just this way. I don't want to lose you on the camera. Yeah, so, yeah, do you think that's what it is then as well? It's that the music is the biggest priority of course in the French flute school but what happens if the music isn't French is that still part of the French flute school that we respect the German style of playing or et cetera et cetera I'm, I'm very uncomfortable to say that France is France and you that French style blah 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 I always say that there's the good school and the bad school first see that's what I think I sort of think <coughs> the French flute school from what I understand now is just it's the name we give because it happened to be in France and it's influenced by France but it is just the 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 school of flute playing, of great flute playing. Well, yeah, maybe. But look, for example, if I speak about myself, and I hate that, but... but you're allowed to in this podcast. I'll yeah. speak for you. <laughs> <laughs> but in France, I'm not considered as a, food, a French flute player because I studied in London and I lived in America and I lived in Great Britain. And I, okay. Yeah, okay. But in America, I was considered as a French flute player. To me, you're one of the French flute players, yeah. But I, I don't know what, what French flute player means. It's because my nationality, but it has nothing to see with my style. True, I agree. Yeah, I, again, I think maybe the French flute style is just, it's the its the pursuit of perfectionism. I think it's just the high quality of flute playing because maybe. we take people like, even James Galway, we mm -hmm. always say Galway plays with a French style. <clears throat> but, you know, when Magali has the same thing, a lot of people say she's incredibly French, but Magali and James Galway are two totally opposite styles Completely. of players. Of course. But they're still from this French school. Yeah, and I think James studied with Marcel Moïse, no? Yes, yeah. And there's and nothing more well. French than Marcel Moïse. At this, so... I, you know, I, I, I think we are pirates. So uh, we study this from many many teachers, from Paul, in my case, Sophie, and you take master class from some people, and then you make your own treasure. And yeah. You, and you find you your own way, you find, you find your own sound, sonority, yeah. your concept, your aesthetic, etc. And of course, I've, I've been brought into the, the French conservatories, and uh, of course, uh, there are some some things that makes me French, but at the same time, I'm, I've, I've lived in many places. Yeah. And um, I, 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 most of the flute players I listen to are not French. Okay. Well, so I have to ask you that quickly then. Which flute players do you listen to? And I don't listen to many flute players because no, I'm I not think, interested. Yeah, I think a lot of us But aren't. I love the English school, of course. I love Paul. Um, yeah. Uh, I, I love uh, William Bennett, for example. Yeah. Um, Anyway. Yeah, that period of British flute playing was yes. incredible, to be fair. That yes. was a really golden era. Of, not yes. that the British flute players are still incredible now, but I feel like that era specifically, Jimmy was also around that Jimmy, kind of time. Of yeah. Um, although, yeah. But I listened to Emmanuel, I listened to Philippe Bernal. I, um, but, Don't uh, we all, yeah. Uh, uh, <laughs> Emily Bainon, who she's not oh. French. Uh, Sharon Bezali, she's not French, for true, example. True, true. Um, I love Sharon Bezali. Yes. I think she's incredible. Yes, exactly. Such an underrated player, I feel like. I oh, feel like we don't talk about her enough. She's amazing. Um, uh, I could say some other foot players, but uh, I and I forgot them, and ah. I'm so sorry if I forgot them. Yeah, no, it's hard um, when you're on air as well to think about these things. Yes, yeah. yes, on Italy, like Andrea Oliva. Um, yeah. So... Actually, then, on that case, so you teach at the CNSM de Lyon. Right. Um, is it important for you in your style of teaching to include the very French things like Tafnel Gobert, mm -hmm. Moise? Yeah, is that important? Yes. I mean, Tafnel Gobert, yes, because for me, it's the Bible. Yeah, okay. You have everything. Yeah. Um, and I never found any better things than Tafnel nah, Gobert. Maybe, maybe yeah. Tassinari exercises, you know, Tassinari exercises. No. It's a good, it's good book. But yeah, Tafnel Gobert. But I always encourage my students to find their own uh, exercises. Okay, interesting. Yeah. In what sense? 
in the sense of, um, of course, playing scales. I mean, you can win Tafel and Gober, but you can invent your own scales um, according to your vulnerabilities. Okay. So if you have problems of playing the high register notes, for example, try to find your tricky, your own tricky exercises yeah. that uh, that ah. make it work. For example, and about the sound, for for example, I mean, I've done not too many exercises in the sound. Okay. But, and I always practice the exercises that my teachers wanted me to play, but I I practice them a lot. Okay. It's because very often so many students they play a lot of exercises yeah. thinking that the more they play the better they're going to the get better. and I think it's wrong I think you have to, to choose what are the good exercises exercises for you yeah and do them well it's yeah. very important okay. and most of them are oral exercises um, like vocalis or long tones uh, stuff that Paul taught me for example it's, it's with no score yeah. yeah okay to really get to know the music then as well yeah and most of the time I speak about the, the sonority and the exercises during the piece for example. during the repertoire yeah because you, you, you have one hour with, with each student Same. every week and you don't have the time to, uh, to, to, to do, do scales, everything uh, yeah. this and this and then the repertoire so yeah. you, I always try to find the good way to speak about uh, the sound for example in the piece yeah on that note do you have a do you have a teaching assistant in San Antonio? yes Leon? I yeah. have two I have Emmanuel Reville uh -huh. who is a principal flute in the Orchestre National de Lyon, the symphonic oh, wow, orchestra. Cool. So she's doing more this kind of uh, studies and yeah. uh, exercises, scales. Yeah, so it's, yeah. And Gilles Cotin, who is my colleague in the Opera House, who is doing the piccolo. Okay. Yeah, because yeah, that's a very French thing as well. I don't yes. think we really get that in the UK of having a teaching assistant. Yes. Um, so they have one hour with me every week. Yeah. They have 45 minutes with Emmanuel every week. And they have half an hour of piccolo. Okay, so at the okay. s at the end it's mm, two hours and fifteen Something minutes like per that, week yeah. of flute uh, teaching. Oh, that's that's really I love that idea. To be fair, I didn't have this, yeah when I, at the Econ Mal the teachers didn't have assistants unfortunately. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. I would have loved that. Um, quickly, just I'm looking at your flute. I normally open the podcast by talking about the instrument, but I totally forgot because I've been having too much fun. Tell us about your flute first of all. Um, it's <laughs> um, it's a Sankyo. It is beautiful. Yeah, Sankyo. Um, yeah, fourteen <laughs> K. And with the engravings, which I like. Um, Do you have the engravings on the keys as well? Yes. Oh, they are stunning. Um, it's a flute I, I bought um, maybe 10 years, or oh, more than 10 years ago, sorry. Maybe okay. 12 years ago. Okay. Before I used to play a song Q 5K, that, the one you Ah, play. yes. And uh, I have another one. It's a, another song Q wooden flute with gold keys. Yeah, you have another wooden flute, yeah. Yes. And Do you uh, use the wooden flute for certain repertoire or is it just when you feel like it? Yeah, I mean, the, the, the wooden flute is, is uh, capricious, as you say. Uh, okay. Capricious. Yeah, capricious, yeah. Uh, so she doesn't like cold. Yeah. Uh, she doesn't like <laughs> so much the low register. Yeah. So, but when it's warm and when you play a repertoire, like yeah. the 18th century repertoire, in the, especially yeah. in the orchestra, if you play... So you use it in the orchestra as well, yeah? A lot, okay. yes. Okay. Mo in Mozart operas, for example, Schubert. Okay. Sounds great. Yeah, really. they are beautiful. I couldn't play maybe the Chandlinos. Uh, I cannot play anyway the Chandlinos. <laughs> <but> I, <laughs> I couldn't play that on my wooden foot, for example. Okay, okay. Yeah. It, has some, it has some limits, but what you can play with the wooden flute is amazing it's beautiful really. when it works yeah. yeah that's true yeah and it has gold keys as well doesn't yes. it wooden flute does that make a difference the gold keys to the silver it, yes yeah it's a little bit more subtle okay yes okay um so I, I like to say that you cannot play everything but the things you play are really sometimes easier yeah. than playing on this one the okay. high register for example on the wooden flute is much easier really okay yeah i don't think i've ever played a wooden flute i don't think i've even really? tried one not like a not a not a bone one okay i play irish okay. flute and stuff and i mm -hmm. find them really difficult to be honest but uh -huh. i've never played a bone one okay my old teacher in welsh college used to have a wooden powell with a gold head joint which okay. i thought was a very strange combination uh -huh. yeah a whole yeah. wooden flute and then this little gold head yeah, joint yeah. but it was beautiful the sound uh -huh. and he used it for everything okay but i don't really know um also I have to ask it in line g i notice Yes. Why in line G? <laughs> you can't just give the answer that you're French. That doesn't count. <laughs> no, no. Actually, my wooden foot has of of. Ah, of. is that because the it's bigger? I don't know why it happened. Um, I cannot tell you. Okay. Um, I think I asked to the wooden foot to have offline because I always play in line, and one day I tried offline, and I think it was really 
much easier in some point. It points. is in so many ways. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and ask. I hate to, to admit it. Yes. And ask Sonkyo to make the wooden flute with of. Okay. Fine. That's the story. But they are bigger as well, aren't they? The wooden flutes. They are a little bit chunkier. So much, m- much thicker. Yeah, you can feel the difference. Yes. And is inline just because that's what you're used to? And yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So and you have I'm no real opinion on it. I'm them? stupid. And I okay. had no opinion at that time until okay. I try offline with uh, another. Have you tried flute. a gold flute with offset? No. No. Okay. No. 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 But then you don't. You're one of the few players I know then that switches between inline and offset and doesn't really make a difference. No, not really. Okay. No, 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 no. Okay, I'm very glad to hear that. Yeah, yeah. I love the offset. Like I really. No, I love inline. <clears throat> but the only reason I love inline is one. I think aesthetically it looks very nice. Uh-huh. It looks nice to have it all in a lovely yes. line. Also, I have like normal size hands, quite big hands, so it doesn't really make a difference to me. Okay. And also, when I moved to France, all the French players played on it, and I was like, I want to be like the French players. <laughs> yeah, maybe maybe Rampal was playing online, and that's why maybe uh, people wanted to play online all the time. I've heard all kinds of yeah, crazy yeah, maybe reasons some why. Uh, crazy know. reasons why. Yeah. I think someone also told me when you have inline, a flute maker told me this, that when it's inline, you don't normally get a split E mechanism within it either, and it's cleaner for the mechanism. The mechanism reacts uh-huh. quicker. Okay. Yeah. I've heard some people say well, that, that with offset, it can, um, I, I, I don't, don't know, know if I believe that or the not. Problem, <laughs> the problem, the things which don't go quicker is these ones. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> with the yeah. edge, it doesn't go quicker. So Yeah, yeah. exactly. I won't <laughs> name the person that said that because I do think it's bollocks, but I won't, <laughs> I won't get into that. Okay, so another offset flute. That's beautiful. And yeah, thank you as well. You've been with thank you the whole time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And can you tell me something wonderful about Sankyo? Um I, I like I like the sound. I like the I love them. The the sound in the logo register. Yeah, uh, I noticed a difference down there. Yeah, and what I love also, um, I mean, it's it uh, might sound stupid, but I love the C sharp, the medium C sharp. Okay, because for it, tuning. Yes, if if you look at the you see that the the chimney. Yeah. yeah, it's much higher. Ah. Than the average. Does mine have that as well? I have to look. It's really high, so it makes really. Is mine as high as yours? Is, is yours? That's a really good question. It's yeah, no. No, okay, I have a cheap one then. No. <laughs> oh wow, yeah, yours is a good bit higher. So it 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 makes um the C sharp much more stable, for example. Ah, okay. Yeah. I wonder if that's a new thing, thank you, because my flute's quite old. Okay. Like I think they started. They stopped making these five Ks like twenty uh-huh. years ago. I think. So maybe and that's why. Do you have this under the this key, for example, the little hole in the hole? Wow. You have that. You might have that. I do. <laughs> I really should know what that is. You never well. noticed that. No. Since how long are you playing your flute? <laughs> Three years. So yeah, yeah. You have this little hole in the hole. That's insane. What does that do? I think it's for the E. I really should know that. Yeah. <laughs> I talk about how much I love Sankyo and I didn't yeah. even know that. There you are. You know everything about them. No, no, no. I don't know any. I mean, I'm not okay. a flute geek at all. But no, you're not. about Sankyo, uh, so, yeah. You're a Sankyo geek and we'll leave it at that. Yeah. yeah okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah, I also noticed, I don't know, maybe it's a psychological thing, but when I started playing Sankyo, I noticed the scale was a little bit different. My tuning was a lot different on Sankyo's, uh-huh. but I preferred it, especially in and around the A's. Yeah. I maybe. always felt something different about them. When I first started playing it, it was always flat for me. Yeah. But then now that I've got used to it, it's so much more comfortable. Yeah. But I don't maybe. know if that's psychological. No, no, maybe you're right. Um, and also the shape of the embouchure as well um, is very comfortable. Yeah, it feels a little bit more subtle for me, the embouchure mm. shape. Yeah. Almost quite French in that sense. <laughs> okay. Yeah, anyway. Yeah, I only you're got obsessed about French. I really am, yeah. You shouldn't be. It's because I'm living in Germany now and I'm stuck <laughs> here with their shit food and their shit beer. And I want to go back to France. I, I have to cut that out now. <laughs> Yeah, what about German food? How do you find that when you're on tour uh, as a French person? Uh, last l- yesterday, I had a goulash, and uh, mm. <laughs> uh, mm. that was kind of interesting. Um, I think it was so salty. I had the feeling that yeah. I was eat- eating all the Red Sea <laughs> at one time. <laughs> it uh, is so funny. I've met, I won't say who, but I've met French orchestras when they come here and I go yeah. for drinks with them afterwards. And it is so funny watching the French people order the food and being like, man, no. C'est pas possible. <laughs> no. I'm just like, no, we can't. No, it's not possible. No, it's not possible. <laughs> so funny. No, I like to come to Germany. I, I, I like this country a lot, but uh, I, there's a food sometimes. It's a bit. Um, yeah, as a French person as well, where you are a bit spoiled in France. Yes. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. Okay. Let's say that. That's fair. Okay. Um. Obviously, we cannot move on. I can't let you go without talking about the album. 
mm-hmm. because I did an entire episode on the album. Yeah, not no, and then you. you sent me a message as well afterwards. I genuinely didn't even think you would hear the review. I just did it because I adored the album for so many different reasons. Um, but I want to ask you quite a lot of it. The main thing I want to ask you is like, where did the idea come from? Like, what was the very first idea that you went, oh, I could make an album like that? Um, it's a good question. In fact, because then I got the job at the Los Angeles Philharmonic yeah. as principal flute yeah. in uh, 2013. And wow, I stayed, was it that long ago? Yeah, 10 years ago. And I stayed there for two years. And I make it really simple. I wanted to stay there. And uh, I came back because I needed to have a kidney transplant. Ah, wow, okay. And uh, and I did it and my father gave me. And so that's why I came back. Otherwise, okay. I would have loved okay. to stay in this circus. Because you might think that, oh, he left Cardiff and he left LA. So he, he always wants to stay in France. No, yeah, I decided, you know I decided like, to yeah. stay there and then for health reasons yeah it was more in fact more secure to, to come yeah. back anyway, yeah yeah long story short um and i had never done any recordings you know and uh, because yeah i always thought that uh, what is the point uh, where where am i uh, is really the world of the flute the flute world willing to hear another uh, recording of Duty or Sonatine or mm-hmm. some stuff like this. And I uh, understand that, yeah. yeah. And and one day I, I I made a concert with um, the pianist and the arranger of this in the CD called Bruno Fontaine. Yeah. And so we, w- I think we played uh, some Takakishvili tak- and Prokofiev stuff. And and he is renowned in France to be a, an amazing arranger and yeah. improviser. Really, is 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 really amazing. And he did a concert where he played uh, improvised and jazz things. And I don't know why, but s- everything sometimes g- in my head is like... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I said, why not making a recording with that guy with some things which have never been made? And that was it? Just when you were in the concert, you thought... That was it. But then it was in somewhere in my yeah, mind. Yeah. Anyway, and I read... And I know... And I listened to a recording of Daniel Hope. Yeah. Uh, called America or something. And he was talking about... No, 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 no. It's not America. It's the Hollywood sound or something like this. Okay, okay. And I, I listened to his CD and I saw that he was playing stuff from California. And I said, okay, Bruno, California, Los Angeles Philharmonic. There's something I have There to we make. are. Yeah. And then I started to, with <sighs> some ideas to make a playlist mm-hmm. of things which were composed in California. Yeah, yeah. And it's huge. The list is huge because Schoenberg. Yeah, they all Eisler, were there. Eisler, Rachmaninoff, Stravinsky. Stravinsky as well, yeah. Um, Bernard Herrmann and uh, yeah. so many. Yeah. They, they all went to California. Yeah. And I said, okay, this is the idea of the CD. Yeah. Um, there's a link. Because I thought that... If I had never been to California, to Los Angeles Philharmonic, me playing this music, okay, why not? But I used to With the real there. connection, yeah. And I can sp- talk a little bit of what I used to, to, to have there. Yeah. What I, what I lived. Yeah. And then, so well, you make, the, you make the playlist and this is better, this is not good. And then I needed someone to make the arrangements of stuff that I wanted to do, like Mancini, John Williams. Yeah. And of course, I thought about Bruno. Yeah. And Bruno is a genius. And uh, so I went to his place in Paris and uh, we talked. And I said, OK, I like this. I, I remember we, we spoke about um, Speedy Gonzalez. Yeah, I love that piece. Yeah. And I said, OK, listen, this is the original. So And he listens to the original, which is like a rumba with an g- electric guitar. And I yeah. said, OK, and this is the one of Jimmy Galway. And he's, this is amazing. And I don't know what to choose. Uh, and I think this, this is great. But also, this is the original. So what should, what should we do? And say, OK, let's, let's do both. <laughs> and what is amazing with these people is that all what you have, all the arrangements that you hear in the recording, yeah. he never used any score. What? He is. Fuck off. No score. Maybe John Williams. Yes. Okay. John Williams. I but have to say. John Williams. Okay. He used the score. But in general, no score. No score. What the fuck? No <laughs> score. No score. Just by hearing. That's insane. Oh, that's yes. ridiculous musicianship. Yes. Yes. Oh. And, um, and I think the result is beautiful. I mean, what he did is, it is. is amazing. And, and um, the arrangements are incredible. Yeah. They're incredible. And, um, and that's the story of the city, you know? 
And how did you choose, first of all, the title? Did you choose the title because of the song, California Dreaming, uh -huh. or was it the other way around? Good point. I mean, so when we spoke about the repertoire of this album, um, we, we were missing like five or six minutes. And then we say, okay, and I told him, we, we, we need to have the last piece, which in fact says it all. I mean, yeah. uh, like it's a mix of the Californian culture and um, because uh, Los Angeles is a Babylon of music. Yes, that's very true. Jazz, very classic, good way to put it. Pop, yeah. Blah, blah, blah. And we were all thinking about making an arrangement of a pop song. And uh, so um, he said Hotel California. Which would have been great. Yeah, but I said, okay, that's interesting. And then I, oh. I, I thought about uh, California Dreaming. Yeah. And, I, and, I, and it was the title of the album because okay. also it was my dream. Yeah, my, okay. my own American. Okay, dream. so that does come together quite a lot. Yes, well, that's the. Okay, story. was that a song you would like? Were you a fan of that song before? Were you? A fan yes, of I loved that it. Kind of music, uh, yeah. I loved it. I mean, I always listened to it, and since I'm a teenager, and when I was in living in LA, oh, so um, I had created a, a playlist in my car with the oh, like the an cliche, LA the, yeah, the cliche <laughs> yeah. songs that yeah. you can hear, like. California Dreaming, Hotel California, The Beach Boys, oh, etc. Yeah. Fucking great, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah so, great. Um, yeah, so that's that's the story. That's a great story, I love that. Although I would have loved to have seen the Hotel California arrangement in there. Yeah, maybe, maybe someday we can do a sequel, yeah. Yeah, and then uh, volume two. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, yeah, fuck. Well, on the note of sequels, quickly, you did say, and this is a bit of an exclusive, but you do have another album, or two albums in the works. Yes. Um, Go on, tell us, tease us. No, it's, it's funny because, in fact, <laughs> It's a guy never wanted to 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 make CDs, and now he makes them. Yes, uh, and I, I, I think, love it. <laughs> uh, I think the, the reason why, without being too intellectual, is that after the transplant, um, it's a new life, you know. Um, yeah, I can imagine. And uh, in fact, it happened that the transplant gives you um, a huge appetite for life. Yeah, well, and of course, my appetite for music. Is um, is unlimited, yeah. and uh, I never wanted to have regrets. In fact, so yeah, and and in fact, when I did California Dreaming, I say it was quite fun to yeah, do. Yeah, I can it's imagine hard because it's very physical. For, for three days, you record from nine a.m. till eight p.m. Yeah, it's so tiring. But in fact, the fact that you have to listen to yourself, it makes you practice. It makes you True. work, etc. And um, and I like the the the, the 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 thing of making an album making a, a playlist making this for a reason yeah and so yes there are two albums which are coming one in July which is um, a foot and a half recital yes with Marie Pierre Longlamé oh. who is principal hub in the Berlin Philharmonic anyone who doesn't know Marie Pierre Longlamé by yeah. the way you have to go listen to her she's played with so many great flute players she's done a I think she's done a few records with Payu as well yeah um, of course usually yes. when there's a Mozart flute and harp concerto yes it's Marie Pierre yes She's a long-time friend. I mean, uh, she's incredible. Yes, we've been playing together since twenty years, and every time we oh. play together, we th we always say, "Okay, let's make a CD." And uh, okay, yes, 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 and then we don't have time. Yeah, she, she works, I work, blah blah blah. And one day we made a, a recital. Say, "Let's make a CD. Let's do it now." Okay, we need to it, to do it now. Okay, yeah, no, we're going to do it now. But like now is in. But now, like okay. next month. <laughs> okay, okay, and in S five we wanted to to do some stuff which is unusual. Yeah. Um, and so we will record, uh, we have recorded, sorry, um, the Poulenc Sonata for Flute and Harp. For Flute and Harp, which you were telling yes. me about this. I don't think I've ever heard that done no. before. Have you heard that done before? No. 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 Also because the piano part to the Poulenc Flute Sonata is a fucking nightmare for piano players. I can't imagine what it's like for oh, a harp player. For the harp is the worst. Yeah. And only Marie Pia can do I'd it. I'd about to say, if because it wasn't Marie Pia, I don't think anyone no, could do she's that. She's crazy enough to do it. <laughs> yeah. No, really. Uh -huh. and, and, um, and it works wonderfully. I can imagine with the, the colors, harp. yeah. Last movement is kind of tricky, but she managed wonderfully, of oh, course. Oh, and especially the, the second movement. I'm yes, sure that the, the first movement with the free time is great. Um, so this uh, La Suite Paysanne Hongroise yeah from beautiful Bartok, piece as well yeah um, Piazzolla Flute and Harp oh yeah the tango four yeah. movements but there's Danse Macabre by Saint-Saëns the Saint-Saëns one the yes. oh how does that go yeah oh that's a cool one to do for Flute and Harp yes some De Falia um, the, the Adagio from the Flute Quartet in D by, in, Mozart? by Mozart oh wow okay um 
so many other things. Um, it's like a world tour of music which has never been recorded for Fruit and Harp. So that is so cool. So none, yeah. of, none of this has been recorded for Fruit I and Harp yet? I think there's one version of the Piazzolla, but that's it. Okay. But yeah. that's, wow. Okay. Yeah. And that's coming out in July. I think July, yes. Something around then. Okay. Yes. And the last one is, um, is a Mozart album. Finally. Um, <laughs> sorry? <laughs> Finally, you've got a Mozart album coming out. I'm delighted to hear it. Yeah. And it's in fi- it will be called um, Mozart, The Women of His Life. Ooh. And yes, and because some of the pieces have a connection with his mom and his love of Aloisa Weber. Uh-huh. Um, so you will have the Fruit and Harp Concerto with another amazing French harpist called Anais Godmar. The uh-huh. um, so Fruit and Harp Concerto was composed in Paris um, when and he went to Paris with his, with his mother. And she died there. Yeah. She yeah. died there. And actually, we think the myth, but... The, uh, the, uh, the slow movement was composed yeah. just after she died. Ah. Uh, but also two concert arias for soprano arranged for the flute. Which arias are they? Uh, mm-hmm. Vores Pegarvi and uh, Voi Avete un Cor Fedele, which have been composed for Aloisa Weber. Okay. Who he met when he was traveling to Mannheim. And he, fo- he, fall in, he fell in love with her okay. in Mannheim, and then he goes to Paris. He went to Paris <sighs> with his mom. And the Andante, which was composed in Mannheim as well, and the Rondo, but in C, yeah. the original version. So yeah. I, I made a cadenza at the end of the Rondo, which links to the rond- to the Rondo. Ah, cool. Okay, yes. you did your own cadenza for yeah. it then. So ah, cool. So Andante and Rondo at the same time. Yeah, and some variation on Elas. J'ai perdu mon amant. Unfortunately, I lost my lover. I don't know that. Yes, it's for violin and piano, and we play that on the flute and harp. Okay. So it's an unusual program, I mean, except for the flute and harp, but yeah. the link is the love of his, of, of his mother yeah. and Aloisa Weber. That is so yeah. cool. I love that. Voilà. That's really, that's and that's going to be out end of I the year? I think November, December. We're working on the date. Okay, okay. Yes, because we have to organize the, the concert in Paris for... Oh, yeah, is there going to be a concert? Do you open it as yes, well? Yes, when, when you when you do a recording, you always have to, always have to do a concert for the great for the uh, outing or the CD. Okay, I'll make sure I'm there then. Yeah. yeah, if you have any free tickets, you can let me know. Of course, <laughs> I could do them as a giveaway, but fuck those guys. No, no, I no, want to no, go. So. Like <laughs> pleasure. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Amazing. There's a wee, uh, there's an exclusive. Right. Before we go, I have a couple of quick fire questions, and uh-huh. then we're done. Okay. So don't stress about them. They're not that quick. Um, first question: Do you have a favorite flute concerto? Foot and harp. There we are. Great. Finally, an answer. Every flute player gets like, oh, I can't choose. I don't want to choose. Fruit yes. and half. Fucking yes. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> um, okay. Do you remember the first flute album that you bought? CD, vinyl. The first one you sort of remember buying yourself or asking your parents or whoever for the money for it? Might be a Rompal compilation of modern flute concertos. Oh, Okay. Might be this one, or I know that one. I'm hesitating with the Mercadante flute concertos with Galway. Oh, might be one or the other. I can't remember. Okay, but you had both anyway, yeah. Well, the Mercadante concertos are amazing. Oh, I love that. And to be fair, that's one thing that I know a lot of people have mixed opinions on James Galway, and I I don't agree with them, but I let them have it. But Galway playing Mercadante is just. That's heaven. That's that's the best because yes. it's such cheesy music and it's in the best possible way. Yes, and yes. I love it. And Galway milks it. It's no, no, so it's good. And the E minor concerto when Galway plays yeah, it, yeah, yeah. fucking. And the D major as well. No, for me, it's the it, for me, it is his best album. Yeah, I agree. Well, I also love the one he did with Martha Argerich where he did the Fox Sonata and the Prokofiev. and the Marco Mahonold as well. Oh yeah, okay. Well, there's a lot of Galway ones. Yeah, yeah, yeah but yeah, we're getting there. Anyway, okay, do you remember the first album in general that you bought? So non classical. I think the first album, which is non-classical, is I bought it in London when I was traveling in London yeah. with my parents, and it was a Paul McCartney oh, album. I knew you flowers, were going to something cool. Flowers in the Dirt. Oh, fuck. Because I love Paul McCartney. Yeah. Are you, big, are you be- a Beatles fan as well, then? Yes. Yeah. yeah. I knew you were going to pick something cool. That's a really yes, good answer. Yes, Flowers in the Dirt. Yeah, the French people. Magali's first album was, I think, The Clash or something. I was like, you guys uh-huh. are so... French people are so cool. <laughs> so effortlessly cool. It's annoying. Okay, next one. If you could switch instruments but be as good as you are on the flute, what would you choose? Conductor. Really? Okay. Yes. yes. I, f- I could see you conducting. No, yeah. I mean... Uh, Have you ever thought uh, about it? Have you ever uh, considered? Yes, but, I mean, it, it takes so long to be a flute player, you know, to... Yeah. 
I would have loved to be a conductor, yes. But a lot of flute players, a lot of flute players have become conductors. Yes, but I think there are too many bad conductors, so I don't have to add myself on the list. <laughs> <laughs> Spoken like a true politician, beautiful. Well, maybe one day. Okay, if you could have a career outside of music, what would you do? So nothing to do with music at all. Oh, yeah. Uh, doctor. Oh, okay. Or politician. Ah, oh, politician would be a good one, yeah. Yeah. I'm but not asking which party. politician, <laughs> I think you need to be an asshole, so... You do uh, a little bit, yeah. And you need to work on this. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I will not talk about which party, because Americans <laughs> watch this and they'll... <laughs> politics gets them going crazy. Okay, if you could have a drink with any musician, alive or dead, who would it be? I think, I mean, you have to imagine that it's a, a nice partner, which who you can have fun and I think exactly. I would have loved to have a drink with Rossini oh yeah yeah see my idea of Rossini in my head is like he's big and he's happy and he drinks beer and he's always laughing and singing and um, yes a, a, a pure Epicurean um, and, oh, good word uh, yeah you know he, he, he stopped he stopped he stopped writing music at the age of 40 really he okay yeah he said okay I'm done <laughs> and then just and lived then his life and then he done life in, and in, oh, in I fact uh, I, I love Rossini I, I love I his adore music, his music really yeah. and in, I hate Wagner I hate Wagner thank really? you I despise Wagner I, can't it, listen to any of his music I hate music really it, it makes me crazy when I have to play it in the opera really yeah. I hate it and <laughs> the fact that Rossini uh, hated Wagner we had that in common and so yeah. we, 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 we could have um, you could have bitched about Wagner yes yeah. exactly <laughs> and you know yeah. the, the story with Rossini I mean it's a true story he has his he was with his students um, working on the piano. And he said, uh, okay, I want to, to make you listen to a score. Okay? Mm -hmm. And he played, and, and, the, and it was just awful, like almost modern music. And the students say, Maestro, what are you playing? I don't know, I'm playing the part. And, then, and they come to the piano, uh -huh. and it was a Wagner opera, but upside down, <laughs> the score upside down. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, so they said, Maestro, you, you're playing the score upside down. And he said, yes, I tried in the right order, but it was even worse. <laughs> <laughs> That's fucking great. Oh, I love that. Yeah, yeah, I would have loved to have a drink with That would be a good one, yeah. I yes. Yeah, I, I appreciate the hatred of Wagner because I cannot stand no, Wagner. No, it's too long. Yeah, I can't. Yeah, it is, it's too long. I've yeah, never yeah, yeah. been to him. Life is short, Wagner is too long. <laughs> oh, I'm getting that in the t-shirt. That's great. <laughs> okay, the very last question. What is your favorite drink? No, you can have alcoholic or non-alcoholic or you can have one of okay. each. Uh, you know what? <coughs> Please I, give me something French. <laughs> I don't like alcohol. Okay. Uh, I, I hate beer. But uh, I love champagne and yeah. I love gin. Oh, very English yes. of you, yeah. Yes, I love gin. Uh, so I would say, or a nice glass of champagne or a nice glass of gin. Okay. And what, what do you have with your gin? Gin and tonic? Yes. Yeah. yeah. And do you have a favorite non-alcoholic drink? You don't look like the kind of guy that would drink can, like a soda or anything. Can I say it? Can I say it? Yeah. It's Apfelschorle. Oh. <laughs> okay, that is one thing I will give Germany. Apfelschorle is yes. It's one of the best things about Germany. I love it. Especially, uh, yeah, I shouldn't say this, but you see when you're hungover, Apfelschorle, uh -huh. when you've got a hangover. Really? Yeah, oh, you're perfect. You're ready okay. to rock again. All right. It's one of Germany's greatest Good inventions. Know. Yeah. Good to know. There Maybe you are. That's a free bit of advice from an Irish man. This was invented <laughs> for this reason. There we are. Well, Junihan, that is... Bang on nearly an hour. Perfect timing. Thank Is you. there anything you want to plug or tell people about or get obviously to check out your album, but they know that already because I talk about it pretty much every fucking episode here. <laughs> but no, anything else? No, I, I, I mean, I don't like to sell myself, but uh, I was so happy to meet you and to oh man, participate you. to this post podcast. Right? And I think it's very important to have this um, kind of event which in fact um, uh, represents also um, flute players in their normal yeah. uh, attitude and normal life. And I, and I, and I think um, many people want to imagine that we are gods or blah, blah, blah. I'm not, not, not thinking that I'm God, but I mean, no, we but are I normal human beings. Yeah. And we listen to Paul McCartney and we drink yeah. apple chole and um, we, we like simple things. Yeah, like well, I'm glad else. that came across because that was my goal the whole time is to, is to present flute players in their normal life because I've met so many of them throughout the years. And I've met so many of my heroes. And then they're just normal people. I'm like, oh, yeah. I wish the, there was a podcast for that. So I made it for Yeah, that. yeah. And, and we are, we are we're the same. We, are, we get nervous in concerts. We, 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 we are normal people. You That's know? a huge relief, I think, for a lot of, especially when you're a student or younger people, to hear that people of your level still get nervous. Yeah, it's normal, no? I think it is, yeah. But yeah. maybe not everyone knows it. Well, thank you very much. It's thank you so much. To say. Thank right, you. guys, we're away. Um, yeah, cheerio, everyone. Thank you. Bye.